Harm's Cortex-A microprocessors can be found in a bewildering range of devices, from single board computers like the Raspberry Pi, right up to servers like HP's Moonshot. Of course, we also find them in our smartphones and our tablets, and even in our Chromebooks. But ARM also make a range of microcontrollers known as the Cortex-M range. And in fact, they're probably more popular than the Cortex-A range. Last year, ARM's partners shipped some 4.4 billion microcontrollers. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority, and today I want to talk to you about ARM's microcontrollers and the Embed platform. A Cortex-M microcontroller is quite different to a Cortex-A microprocessor. Really, they're at two different ends of a scale. There's no access to a GPU, for example, when you're using a microcontroller. It doesn't have access to a sophisticated memory management unit for virtual addressing. It runs at completely different set of speeds. A microcontroller might run at maybe only 48 megahertz or 100 megahertz. And it has only a tiny amount of RAM, maybe 16K or 32K quite different to what we're expecting and what we see with Cortex-A microprocessors. So what are they for? Well, if your microwave oven has a small display on it, it's probably using a microcontroller. The control circuits inside your washing machine are probably using a microcontroller. In fact, we'll find them in wearables like the Fitbit that also uses a microcontroller rather than a microprocessor. We find them in cars, in toys, in smart locks, in security systems, in musical instruments. We find them in anywhere that needs some kind of computer control, but with a low amount of power and not much performance. Of course, the big thing that is uh, blossoming at the moment is the Internet of Things, and microcontrollers are perfect for the Internet of Things. It's able to capture data, talk to the network, send it up to the cloud, and allow us to make intelligent decisions on the information that we've received. And this might sound quite complicated, quite inaccessible, but actually thanks to ARM's Embed platform, it isn't. For just $12, you can get yourself a small board with a microcontroller on it that allows you to start programming almost straight away. Before going on, it's worth mentioning the different microcontrollers in ARM's Cortex-M range. There are currently six microcontrollers, the Cortex-M0, the M0+, Plus, the M1, the M3, the M4, and the M7. The M0 is the smallest, and the silicon for this chip can fit onto the cross-section of a hair. As you go up the range, the microcontrollers increase in complexity and speed. The M3's microarchitecture includes branch speculation and 32-bit hardware divide, while the M4 adds DSP extensions and the ability to use an optional floating point unit. The M7 is ARM's latest microcontroller and offers greater performance and more features. For example, it offers twice the DSP performance as the M4. The key thing about the Embed platform is that all you need is a web browser and a USB connection to start programming. The development environment is all web-based, and from within your web browser you can write code and compile it to a binary. When you plug the board into your computer via USB, it appears as a flash drive. To copy your program onto the board, all you need to do is drag and drop the binary from the Downloads folder onto the drive. Hit the Reset button and your board will start running the program that you have written. The language of the Embed platform is C and C++. That means that anyone with high school level programming experience can start programming an Embed board. You don't need to worry about inventing the wheel again as the Embed platform provides a whole range of libraries so that your board can communicate with other peripherals and with the outside world. For example, there are libraries for networking, USB, LCDs, displays, audio, monitors, sensors, NFC, barcodes, DSPs, and so on. Later this year, ARM will release the next iteration of its Embed platform, which will include Embed OS and the Embed client. Embed OS is a new operating system designed for IoT devices that enables them to securely connect to the rest of the world. It will be open source and is designed specifically for ARM's Cortex-M range of microcontrollers. The Embed client is a set of core libraries which allows Embed OS programs to be ported to Cortex-A based computers and boards running Linux. In other words, you can develop an IoT or other network aware program using Embed OS on a Cortex-M microcontroller and then simply, just by recompiling, port it to boards like the Raspberry Pi or the Odroid C1. At the time of writing, there are over 50 boards available for the Embed platform. Everything from simple Cortex M0 based boards with no integrated peripherals to boards with built in displays, accelerometers, networking, and Wi Fi. 
There are even boards with cellular connectivity, boards with Bluetooth, and there's even a robot. To help you get an idea of what you can do with a Cortex-M microcontroller and with the embed platform, I'm going to look at four boards and see what you can do with each one of them. The first board is the Freedom KL25Z from Freescale. This board uses a Cortex-M Plus core clocked at 48 MHz and includes 16K of RAM plus 128K of flash. It comes with a built-in three-color LED, a three-axis accelerometer, and a capacitive touch sensor. This makes a great starter board, and you can pick one up for just $13. In the world of microcontrollers, the simplest program you can write is one that will flash the LED on and off. It's the equivalent to the Hello World program that is so often used during programming language tutorials. Okay, so what I want to show you now is how you write a very simple program, the blinking LED program, the Hello World program, or the Embed World, to uh, see how easy it is to put it onto one of these boards. So first we go to embed.org, then over here at the right we click on the developer site. And I've already logged in with my account, and then up here at the top it says compiler. So we go there, that'll open up another tab, and we get an integrated IDE here in the web browser. Now, as you can see, there's nothing in the web browser at the moment, so I'm going to go to Import. And this will give me a list of all the different example projects that are available on the Embed website. And the first one I want to import now is Embed Blinky. Just turns the LED on and off. We hit Import. Yep, I want to import that. And here it is. Now, just one thing to notice, up here at the right top right-hand side, I've already selected the board that I'm using. You can click on that button and, and select any boards that you like that are available on the Embed website. I've just got that one board at the moment, so we're using that one. Now, if we double-click on Main CPP, we'll see a very simple program. This one says that the variable MyLED is connected to the LED, and then here, my LED, we turn the LED on and off again uh, with a slight pause in between. Nothing very difficult, it's an infinite loop. Here, while one would just go round and round and round forever, switching that LED on and off. So to get it, all we do is hit the compile button. This will compile the program on Embed's website, and you can see it's downloaded a file here, embedblinky.bin. Now, I've got my downloads folder already open here. There's the file that's just been downloaded from the web browser. And here, drive E, as you can see, has come from the actual board that I've plugged in. When you plug it in, it appears as a flash drive. And all I need to do is drag the file from here to here, and it will program the board and start running it. So here I have the board plugged into my laptop. USB connector at this end, giving power to the board and also allows data to be transferred to it. It allows it to be programmed. This end is connected in to my laptop. Watch this green light. When I copy over the file, it will flash to show that the file is being reprogrammed, the board is being reprogrammed, and then watch to see what happens with this LED here. So here we go. We're going to copy over the file onto the board. Notice the flashing LED, the green one and there's the red one flashing. That's the Blinky program that we just compiled. Our next board is the Nordic NRF51822. This board uses a Cortex-M0 microcontroller clocked at just 16 megahertz and includes 16K of RAM and 128K of flash. In terms of performance, that might seem like a step backwards from the KL25Z, but the, this board is special in that it has built-in Bluetooth 4.1 and includes a battery slot so that the board can be independently powered by a single 2032 coin cell battery. The M0 is designed for the lowest possible power usage and is therefore perfect for standalone Bluetooth applications. And this is where Android comes in. Like a Fitbit or other wearables, this board is the perfect building block for devices that will communicate with an Android smartphone over Bluetooth low energy. Now here I've got the Nordic board with the Bluetooth built-in capabilities, Bluetooth low energy, again connected via USB to give it power, though this one has got a slot for a battery. Not much else is happening here on the board. We can see this little LED is flashing here. Okay, but if we get out my Android phone, we'll be able to see the Bluetooth signals that this device is sending out. So here I am running the BLE scanner. As you can see, the first entry is for my Fitbit. The second entry is for this board. It's advertising itself as HRM1, which is something you can define in the code. 
if we connect to it now, we better see what the scanner is picking up. It's picking up all these different services. We're interested in the heart rate service. Let's click on that. There's lots of other things it can tell you, but one of them is the heart rate measurement, which we want to go to there. We hit notification and we can see the heart rate information coming in 161 beats per minute, 162, 163. It will just keep on going up to 175. Then it cycles back down to 100 again. That's just something set in the code because this is really just a fake heartbeat information that is, we're just using as an example. There it goes, gone back down to 100 now and it will just cycle round and round and round. But this shows the Bluetooth working on that board. So how about that for Internet of Things devices, hey? Bluetooth, smartphone. Now just imagine what you could create. Next up is the Embed LPC1768 and its application board. The 1768 doesn't look like much on the outside, but on the inside it's quite different. As well as sporting a Cortex M3 processor, it has 32K of memory and 512K of flash but more importantly has support for built-in Ethernet and USB. The power of the LPC1768 can be seen when you connect it to its application board. The board comes with an impressive set of peripherals and sensors, including a graphics LCD, an RJ45 Ethernet connector, a five-way joystick, two potentiometers, a speaker, a three-axis accelerometer, two servo motor headers, a temperature sensor, and a socket for a Zigbee. Although you won't find a finished product based around this application board in its prototype form, it certainly makes a good springboard for building something like an IoT device. For example, you can use the temperature sensor on the board together with an Ethernet connection to periodically upload the current room temperature to cloud services like ThingSpeak. It would also be possible to integrate the board with your Android device, again using a service like ThingSpeak. You could write an app to send commands to your LPC1768 to perform home automation tasks, ask for specific sensor data, or even get it to perform a task for you, like tweeting or sending an email. In fact, the only limit is your imagination. If you want something that's a bit more fun than IoT devices, then I recommend the MBOT from Outrageous Circuits. It is an embed-enabled robot with reflective sensors, LEDs, and a buzzer. On first power up, MBOT is loaded with software that makes it dance on a table without falling off. It does this by reading the two reflective sensors on the front. If it detects no reflection, it knows that it is off the edge of the table and will back up and turn. It only costs $30 and provides a great introduction to microcontroller programming. Outrageous Circuit provides all of the source code for the default program and it also provides full documentation including schematics, pinouts and a hacker's guide. As I mentioned earlier, there are over 50 boards available for the Embed platform, and this number is growing all of the time. The boards that I've shown today are really just a brief overview of some of the things that you can achieve with a microcontroller. And of course, once you add connectivity to your smartphone, once you add connectivity to the cloud, the possibilities are endless. Well, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to use the comments below to tell me what you think about ARM's embed platform. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.